Ultimate Universe Issue 1 heads to Asgard, where Doctor Doom and Iron Lad hope the floor plan they swiped on arriving is right and the prison cell in front of them has their target in it. Tony warns Reed that the sun is coming up and they are running out of time, so he better get the man out quick. Doom calls to the man inside the cell, who tells him to go away since he doesn't want food or conversation, since no one should listen to him as he's been branded a traitor. Doom hopes the man is happy to know that he is something of a lawbreaker himself, fixing a device to the door that opens a portal. He tells the man that he plans on freeing him and proving his innocence, and the man hopes that Doom isn't lying to him since he has no patience for liars. The portal opens and Doom promises to free the man, but only if he is the god of thunder and lightning. Thor Odin's son confirms he is, joining Doom and Iron Lad, but he doesn't want to leave just yet since he has a great need, and if that is met, then they won't need to worry about any sort of ship the heroes have used to get there. Iron Lad wonders if Thor realises that the ship he made is an experimental prototype that can navigate both real and imaginary space, but Doom knows that he doesn't, but Thor seems certain on what he needs to do. Tony wonders what is better than a billion dollar ship as Thor goes to retrieve Mjolnir, confronting Lady Sif in the process. Sif warns Thor that this isn't what they agreed to and it seems that he wishes to get the stick and the correction that comes with it. Thor demands that he be given what is rightfully his and he will go about his way at and it won't be any of Asgard's concern. Sif reminds him that he is a royal prisoner and if they escape, she will be the one who gets the blame, so he best return to his cell. Thor refuses and Sif and her men get ready for a fight, but Iron Lad blasts one of the guards in the face, telling him they don't have time for this. Thor refuses to leave without his hammer, but Sif taunts him, telling him to come and take it. Thor knows he doesn't have to, summoning the hammer to him and powering it up. Doom finds it rather an impressive weapon, even more so than Tony's ship. Tony asks if Thor could always summon the hammer, so why didn't he while he was in his cell? Doom theorises that he just didn't want to as Thor smashes his way through Sif's men, unleashing his lightning on the woman and ending the fight real quick. Iron Lad asks how they are going to escape now since they will have to fight their way to the ship. Thor has other ideas, telling his new friends to stand close to him as he summons the Bifrost. Lady Sif dives into the Bifrost portal behind the heroes, following them back to Stark Tower. At the tower, Thor finds the frozen Captain America, told by Doom that in many ways he is as the same as both of them, a hero from an erased age. But unlike all of them who have been corrupted, they rescued Steve Rogers at his origin, where he was the most innocent. Thor intends to smash the man free from the ice block, but Tony warns him not to, since getting Cap out is a complicated process, and they have no safety net in place for anything they do now, so they need to be very careful. Doom wants to replace Cap's blood with a Picio Tech to speed up the unfreezing process, but the files he stole from Maker indicate that Super Soldier Serum is in his blood, so if they replace his blood, he will no longer have his powers. Reed still wants to go ahead with it, but knows that Tony does not like risk. Thor asks if he can hear them, but Tony is unsure, since Steve couldn't regain consciousness until a little further along in the process, so he probably is still in a deep coma. Despite not knowing if Cap can hear him, Thor tells him that he would free him if the risks were not so high. However, he promises his new friend that when the choice must be made to free him, he will be freed since it's better to die free than trapped in a frozen hell. Lady Sif, who has been watching the entire scene unfold, finds Thor's words are strong, especially for someone who was also imprisoned. Thor reminds her that he isn't on Asgard in a cell anymore, but Sif warns him that that's just temporary. And just because he has her leave does not mean he has her absolution, no matter what these humans say to her. Tony tells her that the point of what they are doing is that everything they think is real is just a lie, and the world isn't as it should be, and Thor and Sif can help fix it. Sif doesn't really want to, but Tony tells her that Thor isn't supposed to be some prisoner, he's meant to be her king. Sif laughs that off, since royal blood does not guarantee a royal crown. Thor is surprised to learn that he was meant to be king, so Tony asks Doom to tell him what he told him. Doom explains everything about the Maker, the ruler of Earth, and how he trapped him in a future city so they could change the world back to how it was meant to be within two years before Maker gets out. Doom reveals that Maker is from another Earth, and he arrived on this Earth with one mission, erase the world's heroes from existence, and he was able to do that by changing the circumstances that would transform a myriad of them into who they were meant to be, with the knowledge he had from another Earth's history. Sif demands to know how Doom knows this, revealing Reed was once Maker's prisoner and he was able to steal his files. 
Tony says that Thor was meant to be king, but Maker and Loki killed Odin and stole his birthright, ruining his future, but now they want to set things right. Thor finds great comfort in the idea that the pain he has nursed for years wasn't a sickness or a flaw in himself, but a righteous anger. He agrees to help the heroes and Sif agrees to stick around for the ride, and with the team assembled, Doom sets their next mission, explaining that he stole the most updated files Maker had before sealing the city, and now he understands the reference numbers that were next to each entry he had, finding that they were storage codes for a repository where Maker would keep trinkets and keys or catalysts to each hero he wronged. Doom shows them a map of Lataveria and the repository's location within the Citadel. Sif notes that the Citadel is well fortified and they won't be able to just walk in, but Tony coyly wishes they had someone who could magically teleport them into the Citadel. Later on, Thor teleports the team into the Citadel, finding the repository. As Iron Lad tries to enter the door, he is stopped by a force shield. Doom gets to work on disabling it, knowing the Maker was consistent in his inconsistency. However, he finds there is no passcodes for the doorway, or even any override, so there is no getting in quietly. Thor reminds him that he's the god of thunder, and he's never really concerned himself with being quiet. With no other choice, Thor blasts the door with his lightning, gaining them entry into the repository. No alarms sound out, however, but Doom knows that their mission still needs to continue regardless. But upon entering the repository, they find it's more than just one repository, but dozens of canisters. Sif asks if each of these contains relics from a stolen life, but Doom reveals each hold the relics of a hundred stolen lives, meaning there is thousands of repositories there. Iron Lad doesn't want to leave them all, thinking that maybe they could gather the pods together and teleport them away with the Bifrost, but Sif says that even Mjolnir has her limits on what it can move. Tony asks if Thor could do it though, and the god tells him that it's an evil thing to chain men to fates not their own, but he is a god not bound by the limits of men, so he can absolutely do it. Suddenly, Thor is stabbed in the back by Henry Dugari, who warns them that there are consequences for crime in the capital city. Sif attacks, but the man bats her away like she is nothing, telling the heroes that Captain Britain is going to be their judge. Iron Lad blocks Henry's sword, telling Captain Britain that he is going to end what he and the other secret rulers of the world have done. Henry doesn't take the boy's threat seriously, ripping off his face mask and recognizing him as Howard Stark's son. Tony wants him to remember his face, slamming his palm against Henry's eye and blowing it out with his repulses, blinding the man. Tony asks the injured Thor if he can get them out of there, quickly teleporting the heroes back to Stark Tower. Once back at the tower, Tony gets the medical protocols ready, having never had to use them and doesn't even know if they will work properly on someone like Thor, as Sif nurses the God of Thunder, knowing that he cannot die on her watch. As Thor undergoes a medical procedure, Doom looks over the one repository they managed to take, finding it to be a cryogenic device filled with many catalysts, including a spider. He knows now they have many options at their fingertips, as the now one-eyed Captain Britain meets with the other rulers of Earth, telling them that Stark's son did this and how how he made off with the Maker's lure. Hulk regrets that Henry lost an eye, but they have all wondered what to do with America in the power vacuum that Howard's disappearance created, and now he sees a path forward as Tony has given them North America. The rulers activate their orbital laser and Tony gets a targeting alert, bringing up a visual of the laser, as the Hulk says that they will take America by committing the acts of a terrorist. Tony's armor activates as Doom tells him options are limited with Thor down, and maybe there is only one choice. Tony understands as his corner Quantum field activates just in time as the laser hits New York, obliterating Stark Tower and a lot of the city. Henry and the others wonder how they'll sell this destruction, and Hulk knows that they will do what they always do, tell lies so large that it's inconceivable they were fabricated to begin with, and to cover all of that up, they will put Stark's name on it. Henry questions if they will believe it when they say that Tony Stark did this, but Hulk knows they will since the weapon they used on New York was made by his father. One week later, the news continues its reporting on the tragic destruction of New York, finding that they have questions as thousands still remain missing, and thanks to international aid, a database of missing people has been made. The reporter brings up a chiron of the names, which include Norman and Emily Osborne and May Parker, indicating that these people were close to Stark Tower when the explosion happened. He hopes that anyone who can confirm or deny the names come forward immediately before turning to international news, where an insurgence has been reported in the strongholds of the upper and lower kingdoms. 
The reporter returns to the incident in New York, asking viewers why the teenage Tony Stark would do something like this, theorizing it was because his father and godfather Obadiah Stane both passed so close together driving him insane. He closes out the report, thinking that they may never know since Tony is thought to have died in the attack. However, Tony, from an unknown location, watches the report with disdain growing behind his eyes. 